instead of bang my heart. Bingo, that next day, bang my heart. Bingo, that next day, bang my heart. All right, Shalom, giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the 144,000 and the rest of the elect. This is Brother Tazapai here with you again with another lesson. And for this lesson, I'd like to just speak briefly on the passing of Jacob Rothschild, as you saw the video. Um, the guy on the video was doing the I'm glad the nigga did dance. All right, and that's Jacob Rothschild, who passed sometime between late Sunday, early Monday. I'm not sure the exact time, all right, of his passing, but he's gone. And a lot of people celebrating his death, all right? And that has to be, you know, that's that's one hell of a life to say you had, you you have lived where, People celebrating your death. And I, I guarantee you, even people within his own family are glad he's gone. You know? And, uh, well, I just wanted to speak on that briefly because he's left behind a legacy. All right? Regardless of how you feel. And uh, I just wanted to say that us here that's in the knowledge, in this truth, we don't need to... Um, Start celebrating too early, get in that, that Warren Sapp spirit. Okay, because yes, they by all means be happy that this man is gone. But however, in knowing the truth, we know that the victory is not yet. Okay, and that's just what I wanted to speak to. A, a, a lot of people are happy, but happy for what? You know? Because his work is going to carry on until Yahweh Shah comes back. Now, that's what you, and, and then that's when we, as the hopeful elect, that's when we can celebrate. All right, but until then, we still stuck here in this shithole. We still got to deal with Jacob's trouble. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not telling no one, to, you know, not to be joyful or, or whatever. Do, do your I'm glad that nigga dead dance and then let's keep pushing. All right. So I, I just wanted to start here. Psalm 73 and one. And it says a Psalm of Asaph. Truly the most high is good to Israel. Israel are you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans predominantly. All right. But due to the curses, us breaking the covenant and uh, going into the curses, the Lord made good on his promise to scatter us to the four corners of the globe. And uh, that's where Israel are. Throughout the four corners of the globe, spread it to the four winds. And, you know, we don't just go nowhere and keep to ourselves as Israelites, you know, uh, especially the men, but shit, men and women. But, you know, the women, that's, they don't matter in, in, in the matter of nationality because it's the man that carries the seed. So we're just talking about the men here. And if you think the Lord going to, you know, have us amongst the Chinese and we're just going to segregate ourselves, you crazy. Or have 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 us amongst um, Ishmael or Elam or Ammon, you know, which Ammon is the Japanese Ishmael. You may call them the Arabs today, and Elam, known as the, uh, well, they, they are the um, East Indians today. You know, and if, if you think we don't cohabitate and, and mingle amongst the, the men, that is, with these women and spread our seeds, you're ridiculous. So Israel is spread it across all four corners of the globe and have assimilated themselves within all na nationalities of the earth. And, and that's the, the, the whole deal behind the parable of the wheat and the tares. All right? When the Lord said, you know, the, 
to let them both grow up together, the wheat and the tares, and then the angels would come down at the last and separate the two because you wouldn't be able to identify in certain Israelites from heathens, certain heathens. All right, so how can anyone say that Jake is going to look a certain way and, then, and that's the only way that they're going to look? You're not diligent in the word. You're not applying diligence to the scriptures and learning these scriptures properly. All right. So Israel predominantly are the so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. But yes, we have been scattered throughout all nations on the globe and look like these nations. All right. You got some Israelites that look Chinese. You got Israelites that look Japanese. All right, the whole samurai code and the shoguns came from Israelites. You understand? Uh, wouldn't be surprised if uh, ninjutsu did also, but I hadn't uh, did the research on ninjutsu. But that's probably Jake, the ninjas. Jake started the ninjas. Um, you got Israelites look like Arabs, look like Middle Easterners. You got Israelites look like um Iranians or whatever, what have you. And and of course you're gonna have Israelites all throughout Africa that kinda look like Hamites. Alright. So this is who this is speaking to or about. Truly the most high is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. Alright. Now you're getting into the Israel of God now when you talk about Having a clean heart, because what cleanses a man's heart is the knowledge of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Okay? And and your average Israelite does not uh have that knowledge. Okay. So verse two says, But as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Okay? That's what Asaph is saying. And I felt the exact same way before I came into the truth. And that's what Asaph is going to say. He said, until I went into the sanctuary, I'm paraphrasing. He said, then I understood their end. All right? And we may get that later. All right? But, uh to get to the point here it says but as for me my feet were almost gone my steps had well nigh slipped for i was envious at the foolish when i saw the prosperity of the wicked all right and and how can you not be when you're sitting in the ghettos barely eating and then you see these people looking you know looking as if they have everything at their disposal you know, if you don't have this knowledge, how can you not be envious? And you see it in Jake all day long. This is why they emulate their father Esau. That's why the Lord told them wicked scribes and Pharisees, John 8 and 44, that ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. That's our people today. Slaying their brother in cold blood. All right adulterous witches and all people are heavily into witchcraft and sorcery through the selling of dope you know pushing drugs they don't push them on the heathens no you know they push them on each other these are curses that says here uh, verse 4, for there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. So what, what this is saying here, for there are no bands in their death, meaning they death can't hold them. And not in the physical sense, but in the uh, figurative sense. All right, because their work carries on. All right, as much as you hate them, much as anybody may want to hate them, their work is still carrying on in this earth. All right, and we're going to look at this word, bands. 
all right? So you can understand and see it for yourself. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21 tells us to prove all things. So we just want to look at this word here for bands. And this, the Hebrew word, well, the Strong's number, H2784. All right? And the characters that you see, uh, if I'm pronouncing this right, the characters that you see should pronounce the word uh, that is haratazaba. Hara All right. Haratazaba. Those are the characters. And hopefully, you know, Lord willing, I'm pronouncing that right. Haratazaba. And it says here in outline of biblical usage, it says bond. All right. And we know what a bond is. It's, it's basically to tie or an instrument for tying. But to tie, tie up. And then it has the word feather. A fetter. A fetter is like, you know, a handcuff or chains. For what? For binding. And then a pang. And then hands, because what do hands do? Grab and hold. You grapple, hold with your hands. You grab things with your hands. 1A says bonds. 1B says pangs. All right. Now, this is interesting because this word here is only used twice in all of the scriptures, at least in the Old Testament. It's only used twice. Okay. And we'll get that other scripture here. Uh, yeah, let's go and get the other one. So we we'll go back. All right. Now in Isaiah 58, verse 6, it says, Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness? You see? to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke. You see that? Now didn't the Lord tell us, the Lord himself, Yahweh Shai, tell us in the book of John chapter 8 verse 32 that ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. All right? It's speaking about the exact same thing here. Loose from the bands of sin and wickedness. That's what the truth does. So the Lord is saying here, let me read it again, is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness? This is talking about a fast. All right. And the Lord was talking about overall truth. All right. Now we know that fasting is a part of this truth. All right. So how much more when you walk in the entirety of the truth, will the bands of wickedness be loosed from you? All right, it says to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. Now, as I told you, as we, when we go down here to bands, you'll see the same exact Strong's number. H2784, which we just went into, and that is uh, Haratazaba. Same exact word. And that's the only two times that, 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 here you have it down here, only two times that this word is used, and, and it means, you know, to bind. Okay, bonds of wickedness. Well, that's in the, in the scripture. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, so uh, bond, fetter, paying hands. So now let's go back and look at the verse. All right, so back in Psalms 73 and 4, for there are no bands. No, no bonds in their death, meaning 
Death cannot hold them or stop them. Death cannot bind them up. Why? Because they've already established a system here. And there's a system that's at work to where even if they're dead, their work carries on. And they do it through foundations. You, like you have a Ford Foundation. You had the Clinton Foundation. You had these different foundations. Uh, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. You had these foundations to where when these people pass, that those in, in their cabal that are still alive will carry out these works in their name. So death doesn't stop them. And, and that's all I'm saying here. That, well, that's all the scripture is saying. As opposed to us. When you die, that's it for your black ass. Even if you built something, all right? And, and, and I can't help but to recall, all right, it's a guy that I knew, um, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't know him well, but I knew him through my uncle. And he was, he was a badass mechanic. Uh, he, he built sports cars. All right? I mean, he was bad. And and uh, he took me for a ride in a, I think he had a 67 vet. And that thing threw me back in the seat. I mean, I had never seen a car. I had never been that fast in the car. We didn't go far, but it's just the, the power as he pulled off, that, that it was scary. The man was bad, you know, and he had, he had built up a name for himself. And he was, he was known. And and uh, he had a shop in the back of his house, you know. It wasn't no Rudy Poo shop. He he had a nice shop in the back of his house. But the point is, he died. His son took over the estate, and literally, it all went up in smoke. All right. His son smoked it all, smoked everything up. You know, and it. And like I said, I didn't know him that well, but that, that, that hurted me, man, to hear that. That a man put his sweat and blood in building stuff for his family, and, and you know, and that's all we can do is try to provide for our family and then to have your own family member just wasted. And see, now, going back to the curses, and, and showing you the contrast that, you know, them as opposed to us. You see, they they can die and their legacy lives on. We die, that's the end of it, you know. If the IRS don't come and take and, and you know, whatever little shit you may have, your family will fight and squabble over it. You know, and to uh, and and sell it off and and divide it up. But anyway, Psalm seventy three and four: For there are no bands in their death. So the house of Rothschild lives on, just like they showed you with Hydra in the Captain America movie. You know, you cut one head. Two, three, four, five more pop up. This thing has to be cut from the root. And that's why Yahweh Shai is coming uh, as according to Daniel chapter 2 and smash the feet and bring this whole monstrosity down. Only Yahweh Shai can end this. It's going to take more than one man dying. You know, for me, it ain't nothing to celebrate. I'm, I'm glad that old bastard is gone. You know? But yeah, shit. Who, um, Rockefeller passed a few years ago. Shit, what was that? 21? 2021? I forget, uh, but Rockefeller died. What changed? Nothing. I forget uh, the name. Y'all know the old... He damn near looked like, or uh, kind of reminds you of uh, Soros. But shit, Soros might be next to kick the bucket. But still, nothing would change. And and this is all the scripture is saying. There, there, is, there are no bands in their death, meaning 
Just because they go to the grave, that ain't going to stop them. All right? It says in verse 5, they are not in trouble as other men. You see that? They can get away with murder, literally. And they do it, shit, damn near on a daily basis. When you talk about the trafficking that they do, when you talk about adrenochrome and, and all this other madness that they get into, you see, can nobody else get away with shit like that? Yeah, only they can commit these atrocities. And they never even get mentioned, much less tried in the court of law or them, you know, being being punished for their for their crimes against humanity. It doesn't even get mentioned. And then this is why they are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Not at all. It says, therefore, pride compassed them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. This is what you see going on in both Ukraine and Israel. All right. And they've been eyeing Gaza and that's where the Palestinians at. They've been eyeing that since 67. And really, really since uh, Albert, Albert Pike did his letter. Uh, I forget who who that letter was to, but uh, since he, Albert Pike, wrote that letter outlining three world woes and how they would be carried out and what they would accomplish in having these wars. All right. So they've been eyeing Israel for a long time. And as far as Ukraine, you know, they've been eyeing Ukraine for I, I couldn't tell you how long, but it's been a minute. And NATO, they've been trying to get in Ukraine to be a part of NATO. And so this is what it say. Their eyes stand out with fatness, meaning they got greedy eyes. All throughout Africa. You see? Um, it shouldn't be nobody broke in Africa. One of the richest lands. Continents. On the face of the earth. There should be nobody hungry. There should be no, no one impoverished in Africa. With all of the numerous resources in abundant resources that they have but while people living in squalor living in oppression depression living you know just uh horrible lives and, and it's because this man and, and this man i'm talking about you know uh which is the nationality of Jacob Rothschild. He fancies himself as a Lord, but he's no Lord of mine. All right. But these people are the biblical Edomites. And this is who Psalm 73 is speaking about. The biblical Edomites that you know as the so-called white people. You see. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish and, and and this is because they are true niggards, niggards, all right, S selfish, miserly people. So if they see you with something that they want, they're going to covet it and take it. And that's what it means. They see something, and they, oh, shit, we, we need that, I, I, you know. We need to get that. If it's for no other reason, because like I said, they have more than heart could wish, but for no other reason but to take power 
from you. All right, because there's nothing superior about this man. What makes him superior is that he has to keep everyone on the base level because he is the basest of men. So anything that will empower you, he's going to take it away. Whether he needs it or not, he's going to take it from you so that you can empower yourself and build your people up because then you could possibly be a threat to him and his empire. Because this man is not superior. And so it says here again, verse 7, their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. Okay? They are super corrupt. I mean, yeah, corrupt is putting it nice. These people are beyond corrupt. But yeah, the scripture stands true. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. All right. I mean, they speak highly of oppression. And that's what the, the whole world is under their thumb, under their oppression. It says here in verse nine, pursuant to what I was saying earlier about, you know, their their works transcends the grave. Because so it said, they set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Now, you know, this is uh, figuratively. Their tongue is not literally walking through the earth. It's talking about the policies that they implement, the things that they say that they've spoken and and put in the power is still in power that's what the, that's what the scripture is saying their tongue walketh through the earth meaning anything just like all right uh well what's a good one i, I was gonna say the, the acronym peoples and and uh you could you could make that argument but let's say uh christianity all right, plantation. Okay, let's Renaissance Christianity. It, it walk it through the earth. Even when you talk about Islam, it's a faction of Catholicism. I'm I'm sorry to hurt you people's feelings in the in the NOI. That's the nation of Islam, but you're just another faction of Catholicism. All right, but they got to have two opposing sides. So Islam is the opposition to Roman Catholicism. But when you when you get on the level, all right, scholarly, you see that there's there's two factions of the same entity. That's all it is. And that's for the sake of uh them controlling the masses. All right. But this is probably one of the best examples of their tongue walking, walking through the earth because they told you, you know, about sweet Jesus. And so sweet Jesus is still, you know, if the Pope was to, was to die today, what would happen? They'd establish another pope. Catholicism wouldn't miss a beat. And, and you know, their tongue would still be walking through the earth. And that's for the sake of uh, imprinting that white uh, supremacy in people's mind. You know, with that, that image of sweet Jesus. You know, searing that image in your mind that they are the descendants of the, the Most High and His be, only begotten themselves. Because, look, we look just like them. This is what they're saying. You know, and that hey, the law is done away with. Who's keeping the law in the earth? Hmm? Who's keeping the law? 
You got even Hebrew Israelites that, you know, they claim to be Hebrew Israelites not keeping the law. But no, that's going to be a handful of men that's going to begin with the apostles of Great Millstone. All right, beginning with the head apostle Tahar. You understand? So, right, their tongue walketh through the earth, meaning that certain policies and things that they implemented they had to be spoken. You know, like, right, we're going to do this, and then we're going we're gonna to do that, and then we're going to, you know, and then they, they do it. That's what Micah tells us. And here in Micah chapter 2, verse 1, Micah chapter 2, verse 1, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. You see? They had the power to do this. They First, they devise it. And what do they do? They conspire. They come together in one breath, one mind, and they say, we're going to do this. And then that's what the whole world does. Because they, they had the power to do that. They say something, they had the power to make it happen. Called the earth, pursuing to Job 9 and 24, is given unto the hand of the wicked. And this is why he has, it says it is in the power of their hand. All right. Again, Micah 2 and 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and that and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. It says, and they covet fields. Remember, their eyes stand out with fatness meaning with greediness. They see, you know, or hear about, oh shit, they just found a, a, a mountain of cobalt under the earth. Oh shit, there's vast amounts of lithium over here in, in this country. And then they bug out. You understand? And they covered fields and take them by violence. All right? Over there in Ukraine, they're trying to take that. All throughout Gaza. They're trying to take that. Rafa and all of that. All right? And they covet fields and take them by violence. And houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and... Yeah, they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. Therefore, thus said the Lord. Behold, against this family do I devise an evil from which ye shall not remove your necks, neither shall ye go heartily, for this time is evil. All right? And this is what we're waiting for. Yeah, we'll celebrate the small victories, but don't lose sight. This, we got a long way to go. Not super long, but we still, the worst is yet ahead. All right. So again, back in uh, Psalm 73 and 9, they set their, wait, yep, yep, yep. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore, whatever, well, that, that was it. Yeah. Yeah, and I just ended right there because, you know, the point was made. And, uh, okay. Oh, shit. Salakia, let me see here. I think I wanted to hit this before I go. So I'm going to jump here to verse 16. All right. 
This is Psalm 73 and 16 in closing. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. All right. Everything that we just read previous to this verse, Asaph is saying, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. But he said what? Until I went into the sanctuary of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, then understood I their end. And what is the end? Well, we just read it. The Most High pronounced their end to be evil. He's going to put them in, in uh, I wish that worded, but he's he going to put them in something that they won't be able to get out of. I got to go back and pull that up. But right, when you get into the knowledge of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, then you understand things, and then you be like, oh, well, shit, I don't want no part of what, because he said, I was envious at the foolish at first, but then he said in uh, 16, 17, you know, then I understood when I went into the sanctuary. So the Lord said, uh, you know, going back to that end. Back in Micah again, two and three. Therefore, thus said the Lord power, behold, against this family, the family of Edom, do I devise an evil from which ye shall not remove your necks. All right. And that evil is us. Well, we're part of it. All right. And then, Lord willing, I be of that number. All right. But. Yeah, that uh, part of that evil is the elect. The Most High is going to raise up the elect pursuing to Psalm 149. All right. Let's go to that. Psalm 149. So this is, this is a part of the evil that the Lord is talking about. And here we are, Psalm 149 and 6, it says, Let the high praises of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, be in their mouth. Who mouth? The mouths of the elect. And a two-edged sword in their hand. Yeah. I wonder what that's, why, why the elect going to have two-edged sword? It ain't talking about the word here either. All right. Now is the time we're using the spiritual sword. And this is talking about a, a literal sword right here, all right? And a two-edged sword in their hand. It says what? To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. Now, that's evil. Because evil means bad time, all right? So the Lord is going to raise us up to give this man a bad time, just like he raised Esau up. Pursuing the Psalm 17 to give us a bad time to pronounce evil on us. In which evil we still uh, suffer under to this very day. You see? We're still under this evil to this very day. Well, the Lord is just going to flip the script on this devil. All right? To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, DuPont, Schiff, uh, the Gettys, DuPont. I said DuPont, uh, this one I'm thinking about. Oh, Oppenheimers. The Oppenheimers and others. The Arsini family. All right. Arsini going back to the 1600s. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, the 1600s. Yeah, these, the, you know, the people that call the shots behind the scenes that you, you rarely, if ever, hear about. You hear about Rothschild and Rockefeller, but a lot of these other families, you rarely, if ever, hear about. You see? So, this is what it says, to bind their kings with chains, all right? We're going to put the, uh, what is it, the, uh, son of, oh, Chara Tazabah on them. 
we're going to put the fetters on their ass. And, and that's when, you know, it's going to be a stop to all of this shit. But the Lord has to come back to initiate this. Lord Yahweh, the true Lord. He has to come back to initiate this. And lift up his elect. So it says to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Yeah. Haratazabah. To execute to execute upon them the judgment written. We, we just read that judgment. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Hallelujah Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Praise ye the Lord. All right. And we just read that judgment. I'm going to go back and read it again. Therefore, the, oh, Micah 2 and 3. Therefore, thus said the Lord power. Well, Therefore, thus said Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Behold, against this family do I devise an evil from which ye shall not remove your necks. Neither shall ye go heartily, for this time is evil. All right. And the elect is a major part of that evil with them two edged swords and them chains and fetters. And oh boy, it's going to be a good time. Oh, we're going to have a good time. Man, we're going to have a good time. You know? So, uh, I'm going to go back and finish in Psalm 73. So, again, Psalm 73 and 16. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of the Most High. Until I understood the truth. All right, the truth is our sanctuary. It says, then understood I their end. So, you know, I pray that you brothers are edified and I'm going to uh, close it out with the rest of the video. So, to the next one, Shalom. Ha ha ha! Ha! Ah, la la la!